used to see poverty as a lack of stuff, not enough money, not access to school, um, and yes, those are issues, but really the driving force of poverty, and I think this came out of your, what you said, Rosangela, is inequality, disadvantage, discrimination. And you know what one of the key factors is in that inequality and disadvantage? It's actually whether you were born a boy or a girl. So there's, there's lots of women here uh, in the audience and here in Australia, I'm sure you know that um, your salary right now, if you're working, um, will be less than uh, a man's salary on average with a similar background. Your lifetime earnings as a woman um, are less on average than the lifetime earnings of a man in the audience here. And when you retire, your uh, superannuation on average will be lower than a man's. Now, I imagine that everyone in the audience here would like to see that change. And clearly, Australia is a, is a wealthy country, which actually has done reasonably well on a lot of gender discrimina in discrimination indicators. When you transfer that into poor communities, into developing countries, I think some of the indicators are much starker. So what do we see? So in developing countries, women grow about 50% of the food that's consumed, but they own about 1% of the farmland. Actually, 70% of people who live in extreme poverty are female, women and girls. Um, Two-thirds of illiterate adults are women. So there's all these ways in which, because you were born a girl, so many choices um, are made for you. Uh, and so women are disadvantaged um, and, uh, and that sort of cultural norms create uh, an unlevel, uh, uh, not a level playing field based on your gender. But we also know that when we do address the gender norms that create discrimination, when a woman uh, does uh, come out of poverty, on average, she brings four other people with her. And that's because actually, <clears throat> on average, women compared to men reinvest the, the, their resources, their assets, the money they control. They tend to reinvest that into their family at a higher level um, and into their immediate community at a higher level than do men. So actually ensuring that women also have decision-making power within the family Women also are able to control assets. Um, women's voices are heard when communities talk about their aspirations, their development goals. These things are fundamental to overcoming extreme poverty. So we won't overcome extreme poverty unless we also address the, the, the cultural norms that actually are holding back 50% of the world's talent. Um, and relegating them to lower status uh, positions.